started painting in year 2009. It was, um, I was going through some very difficult time in my life. Um, my marriage was um, falling apart, I was falling apart, and I've decided to go to this island called uh, Pulau Kapas in Trungano. And then I spent some time alone and I did some sketches and drawings and I met my old friends again and they said, hey, you know, you can actually draw pretty well. So have you ever considered doing this as your career? I said, no, never. So then I just continued to paint and draw and after giving it a serious thought, I said, I think I want to pursue this art as my career because uh, being an artist, I have the time to myself, time that, and freedom that I want so that I'm able to spend the time with my grandma oh, and also to raise my son. Very nice. Uh, yeah. 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 In our school days, we are not taught about the history and appreciation of art. So naturally, people don't gravitate towards that subject. Monsoon series was a very, very long, long time ago. I think sometime in 2009 or 10, I think. Um, that's, that's my first exhibition. That was my first series of paintings. And that painting, that, that series of painting was about the monsoons in Trangano, in Pulau Kapas, you know, east coast of Malaysia. And as you know, monsoon, it's about heavy rains, heavy downpour. And, and I was at the beach by that time. Sometimes I feel like my emotions are like the waves in the monsoon. Strong and very powerful. And intense and I could feel the sound of the wave I could feel how powerful the waves are things that we cannot control in our lives but yet we have to go through it so I've decided to capture those moments those feelings through my paintings maybe my family was not so encouraging in the beginning because they said that you know being an artist is not going to put food on the table and you need to first put food on the table before you can actually draw something or you can actually pursue it as a hobby. They would rather me pursue this as a hobby rather than uh, my career because it's not stable to be an artist, right? Yeah. But then they see that I'm very serious in what I do and I'm very determined in what I do. Now they're very supportive. And here I am today. The Naked Truth series, hmm, that is a very interesting series, uh, exploring about the male ego, how most of the time, a lot of strong men that you see, I feel, or the people that I have met, has uh, a lot of ego in them, me including. You know, we have so much of layers that we, we have, and it takes a lot of courage, a lot of strength, a lot of uh, effort to want to peel those layers and really see what is the truth inside us. Um, you can see that those paintings are mostly men. And you can see those men are usually with very strong muscular backs. Um, there's a lot of weight we carry, not just our back, but it's just like a, it's, it's, it's a, what's the word they use? A metaphor, a metaphor for strength to want to delve deeper. Uh, to deal with all the burden, to deal with all the pain that's eating us inside. And, but then, but we need to have a lot of, what do you say, um, courage to delve very deep in us and find out what's hurting us inside. So being naked is also being vulnerable. And being vulnerable is a feeling that not everybody wants to feel. Not 
artist, uh, we are encouraged to explore as many styles as we would like or can. And I started painting then, learning figurative art. And from figurative art, I've decided to slowly evolve into pure abstractionism. Uh, I kind of like the freedom of not having to draw anything that is representational art. I think that to me is more interesting and more challenging actually. Abstract is not just about splashing paint, there's also a lot of control involved in producing an abstract piece. You must know, okay, this part is too much, this part you need to rest a bit, you need to have more depth, so your eyes have to be sensitive in also producing a good artwork. Uh, I wouldn't stick to one. As you can see from my studio, I would use brooms, I would use the pouring method, I would use uh, brushes, not, not just paint brushes, but also sometimes toothbrush, um, sponge, anything that I can find. I, I prepare my, my area, like, you know, I just organize my workspace, make sure my water is there, my tools are around me, and uh, I have a chair, and the fan is on, and I'm ready to go. When I'm doing abstract, it's very spontaneous. I want to capture that spontaneous moment. That, to me, is how I differentiate myself. The Ong series explores my relationship with my grandmother, whom I love very, very much, who's looked after me since I was a baby. Because of her, I'm where I am today. You know, if you see any kindness in me, it's because of her. She is such a beautiful soul. Yeah, she's very giving and a very loving person. That's why she was the inspiration behind my um, third solo exhibition, which was held at the National Art Gallery. When I found out that she had cancer and that she doesn't have very much time, I wanted to capture that moment with her. All the good memories that I have with her. And um, that to me was the message I wanted my viewers to see, or people who come and look at my painting, is to remember the good times that you have with the people you love. Development of Malaysian art scene is very progressive. Oh, well, I wouldn't say very yeah, progressive. Yeah. It is, we are on the way. Um, this is, uh, we are not as progressive as other developed countries, but I think Southeast Asian artists are very, very, very extremely talented. Um, we'll get there when we will have more museums, do more exhibitions, do more talks about art, um, conduct more classes, we get there one day. I'm very emotional, I'm very sensitive. I make my own rules, I, I create my own games, and I choose the people I want to play with. And that's why I said I found my playground being an artist.